everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet these super cute and very easy statement tree post earrings. This is a classic granny triangle that we're gonna complete in just two rounds. And then we're gonna do this cute little one round star for the top. I've uh, attached them with a jump ring so it has a little bit of a dangle when you wear them. And then we're just gonna quickly glue a backing to the back of our star. So very quick and easy, and then you'll have a really seasonal, super cute pair of earrings to wear. The total height of these earrings from the top of the star to the bottom is about two and a half inches. The tree itself is about an inch and a half tall and an inch and a half wide. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a smaller tapestry needle because we're gonna be using a smaller hook and, and embroidery floss. You'll need some post earring backs. Now, some are sold just the post, and some are sold with the backing as well. So it just depends. If yours don't come with them, you'll need some backings, of course. Um, you'll need one jump ring that we're gonna use to connect the tree to the star here. We're gonna be using a 3.5 millimeter E crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey. I'll put the link down below and a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself. We're gonna be using some embroidery floss. Um, you'll need a green for your tree color. I chose like kind of classic colors, a classic shade of green, like a grass green. And then I chose like a bright yellow. It's kind of like a gold yellow. So um, this is vintage. I don't have the color of this, but I just chose like a bright gold yellow. And then um, this one is DMC color 699 if you are looking for these colors. Um, this embroidery floss comes in tons of colors and it's very inexpensive. I think I paid about 25 cents for this one and this one I've had for a long time. Now to open your jump ring, some people can do it with their hands. I prefer jewelry pliers. It's just a little bit easier for me to do that. And you can use one and hold it with your hand and open it that way. Um, I always use two pliers and open it. So it's, that part's up to you, but you'll need a pair of jewelry pliers if you um, need help opening your and closing your jump ring. And then we're gonna um, hot glue the earring back onto the back of the star. So you'll need some hot glue. If you don't have hot glue, um, some craft glue like Eileen's Tacky Glue is a great glue for crafting, um, or some E6000 is a very strong glue. Just make sure when you're using those strong glues that you uh, ventilate your space as well. So let's get started. As an option, um, it's totally up to you. You can paint the back of your earrings if you wanna stiffen them up a little bit, if you find that they're curling or kind of folding in on themselves. Um, this is a fabric stiffener and they have other ones too. This is the one that I use. Um, you can find this at the craft store. And what you do is, uh, what I like to do is just squirt a little bit out and use a small brush and sort of paint the back and it dries clear. And if you want um, different levels of stiffening, if you want it to be very stiff, then you wouldn't dilute it, but you can dilute it a little bit with water if you want a little bit less stiff. So um, this is called Stiffy, it's by Plaid. And um, they have other brands, like I mentioned, but um, this is the one that I like to use. And it always comes, it seems, in these huge bottles. <laughs> this is probably more than I'll ever use in my entire life. But um, this is really nice for projects like this where you want a little bit of stiffness to your project. And it's totally up to you. You can use it or not. Okay, so this is such a fast project. I'm going to plug my hot glue gun in and just kind of move it out of the way and let it warm up. We're going to make our tree first. This is a classic granny triangle and our star next. So grab your tree um, embroidery floss, whatever you're using for that. It doesn't even have to be green. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, but whatever color you're using for your tree is what we'll start with. So what we're gonna do is when you use embroidery floss, you wanna leave these little bands on there and then find the end and then just kind of hold on to the bands and pull like this and it'll keep everything nice and neat. If you take the bands off, it tends to mess up your skein of embroidery floss. So just as a side note. So I'm gonna pull a little bit out, and what we're gonna do to begin is put a slip knot on our hook. Now this is a tiny hook and some, some fine floss here, so just go nice and slow and take your time with it. Our granny triangle, as you can see here, is just two rounds, so super fast. What we're gonna do is put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your hook. Bring up that loop and tighten. 
Next, we're going to chain four. We're gonna create the ring that we'll work our stitches into. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna join in the farthest chain from the hook with a slip stitch to create the ring. So go down to that first chain, insert the hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And then you can kind of open up your ring a little bit because we are gonna be working a bunch of stitches into that. This tail here, here we'll want to weave in as we go. That will save you a step from weaving in later. So what we're gonna do for round one is chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Next, in the center of the ring, we're gonna work three double crochet. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the center of that ring and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. And I'm just gonna zoom in just a tiny bit more because this is tiny. Uh, you'll have three loops on your hook. So wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So that was one double crochet. I'm gonna just get a little bit more of this floss here. So that was one, and then we're gonna make a second one into the center of the ring, same thing we just did. So second double crochet, if you notice I'm going nice and slow, just taking my time, everything's really small. And then we're gonna work a third double crochet, just like that. Then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. And then we're still holding that tail along the edge as we work. Then we're gonna work three more double crochet into the center of the ring. So one, two, and three. Just like that. Okay, then we're gonna chain three once again one, two, and three, and then we're gonna work two double crochets into the center of the ring. So one, two, All right, and now we're ready to close the round. So remember that chain six we did at the beginning of the round? Three of those chains count as these chain three spaces that we just created, but three of the chains count as one of the double crochets, because see, we only did two here, so that's gonna count as one of them too. So count three chains up, one, two, three, and work a slip stitch into that third chain up. Insert the hook, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And now we have round one of our triangle. Doesn't really look like a triangle yet, but we're gonna add more to round two here, and it will start looking more like a triangle. Okay, so what we need to do is work a slip stitch into this first space, this chain three space here. That will get our hook in the right spot to begin round two. So for round two, once again, we're gonna chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're gonna work three double crochets into that same chain three space. So one double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet. You get a little bit more floss. We're really moving through the floss rather quickly here. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to chain one this time, and then we're gonna skip over to uh, the next chain three space. So skip over this cluster of three double crochets here and go to that next chain three space. And in that chain three space, we're gonna work three double crochet. So one, two, and three, right in that chain three space. And then we're gonna chain three, one, two, three. And in that same space, work three more double crochets. So one, two, and three. Okay, then we're gonna chain one, and then hop over 
that grouping of three double crochets and go to that next chain three space. And we're gonna do the same thing in that space as well. Three double crochet, so one, two, get that tail out of the way, and three. Then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and in that same space, work three double crochet. So one, two, and three. Then we're gonna chain one, and now we're back to the beginning of our round. So remember that chain six? In that space right there, that next chain three space, we're gonna work two double crochet this time. So go in that space and work two double crochet. One, scooting things over if you need to, and two. All right, and then we're ready to close the round. We're gonna do the same thing we did in the previous round. Count three chains up, one, two, three. Join with a slip stitch to close the round. And our little triangle is complete. It looks really cute. Okay, so what we need to do now is just cut the yarn and fasten off. And then right now, while we have it in front of us, we can go ahead and weave this end in. We don't need to save the ends to seam. There's no seaming on this one. Okay, so that tail you wove in as you went along, go ahead and give that a nice firm tug and trim. This will be the back of the earring. And then this tail here that we have, go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. And carefully, this is the back, so the front of it is what faced you while you crocheted it. So flip it over to the back. We're just gonna go into some of those back loops and weave this tail in the best we can. So just go nice and slow. I know it's small, these small little projects. I know for me personally, I need to go very slow so I can see everything. And then, once you weave that in, you can trim. Okay, and then I like to just straighten all those little stitches out. And now we have two granny triangles. We have two trees. Let's move on to grabbing our gold and making a little star next. All right, we're ready to tackle our one round star next. So grab your embroidery floss. I need to find the end here. And what we're gonna do for this one is once again, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. And then we're gonna create the ring that we'll be working our stitches into. So one, two, three, four chains. Join with a slip stitch in the farthest chain from the hook to create that ring. And again, we're going to hold that tail along the edge. So this star starts the same way as our granny triangle did. So for this project, or for this piece rather of our earring, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create, I'm gonna bring it back over here. We're gonna create a little tiny five point star. So for each point is a treble crochet chain one slip stitch. So we're gonna do that five times. We're gonna do this together. So to make a treble crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook two times, insert the hook into the center of the ring. Again, go really slow, it's very small. You'll have four loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Let's go nice and slow. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then we're gonna chain one and then we're gonna work a slip stitch into the center of the ring, and that will be our first point. So go into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Let's do one more point together. Work a treble crochet into the center of the ring. We have yarn around hook, first two loops, yarn around hook, next two loops, Yarn around hook, last two loops. 
a little snug. There we go. Chain one. And I got all kinds of stuff coming over here. <laughs> Chain one and then slip stitch into the center of the ring, okay? So repeat that until you have five points on your star. You can see we have two right now. And then we'll rejoin and I'll show you how to finish it up. Okay, we've worked all five points and if it's a little misshapen, totally fine. We're gonna straighten it all out. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is at the base of the next point that you come to, we're gonna work a slip stitch into that base. And again, it's really small. You might need to sort of guide your hook in there. And then just work a slip stitch to fasten off, okay? So I just have a tiny bit of floss left. I'm just gonna wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through that loop and then tighten that knot up a little bit. Now your star is not gonna quite look like this star. This one I've straightened out a little bit. But let's scoot all this out of the way because we're gonna assemble next. So grab your tail, that center tail that you wove in as you went along, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna give that a tug and just pull it nice and tight and trim it with our scissors. This is on the back of the star. And then you can take your, I'm gonna cut this so the tail's a little bit more manageable. I'm gonna cut that tail a little bit shorter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread that tapestry needle, flip your star over to the back, and just go into some of those back loops to weave that tail in. Okay, I'm just going nice and slow, taking my time. And give that a snip. And then what you'll wanna do is your star, if it's a little misshapen, cause it's really small and there's a lot of stitches there in such a small little area. What I like to do is sorta of give each one of those star points a pinch. So just like pinch it so it's nice and sharp and looks like a more like a star, and less lumpy. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is put everything together. So we have our two little stars and we have our triangles. So what we need is um, a jump ring. I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna put, actually you'll need two. Um, I said that you'll need one at the beginning, but you need one per earring. Um, and so what we're gonna do is when you have a jump ring, your, um, it will have a little slot in there. So you're gonna grab your um, two pliers or one plier, whatever you're using, and you're gonna take your two pliers and you're just gonna pry it open a little bit. So let me open these up, there we go. And my jump ring fell. And we're just gonna like pry it open like that. See how it has like a, a little bend opened now? Okay, and then what we need to do is our ring is gonna go like up and down, okay? So what we're gonna do is you wanna position your star. We're gonna put it at the top of the tree and it'll be sort of dangly. So we wanna go uh, have a star point at the top and then two points at the bottom. So grab your star and go in between those bottom points. Just be really careful and try to get more than one loop in when you do that so that um, if you just pick, did, did one loop, it would like pull that loop out. So if you do more than one loop when you catch it on there, um, it'll help a lot. And then what we're gonna do, we have our star one, and then we're gonna hook it in that center top space of our tree. Just like that, okay? And then just kind of put everything on there. Grab your pliers again. Those of you who can do this with your fingers, um, awesome, I just can't. And then we're gonna take our pliers and we're gonna just bend it back into place, okay? So just make the two ends meet. And then we have our star and our tree and they're connected. Now we're ready to add the post. So like I said, I have my hot glue gun um, warming up over here and it's ready to go and my post. So what we wanna do is flip our earring over and then you're just gonna add a little tiny drop, not too much because we don't want it to seep through our stitches because it'll show on the other side. And then we're just gonna flip our star over to the back and we're just gonna very lightly drop it down on there and make sure it's centered so you can't see any metal from the front. And you might wanna sort of gently lift it up and peek, just make sure no metal is showing on the sides of those star points. 
and then you can lay it back down and then just kind of tap it into place. Don't press, it'll squash the glue through all those stitches, okay? And then you'll just wanna grab your other star and tree and repeat. Okay, we've added our earring backs to our earrings and they look so cute and they're all done. So that was really fast. You have some cute little statement earrings to wear. So that is how you make the statement tree post earrings. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.